In the days of old, many Bidayu lived in the mountains and hills. This was because inter-tribal war was frequent and head hunting was rampant. Staying in highlands offered better protection. Bong Muan was one of those mountains. There were three villages, Peninjau, Bumbok and Serembu with a population of about 700. When James Brooke became Raja, he put an end to head hunting and seek to find peace among the different tribes. He built a cottage in Bung Muan to recuperate and escape from the lowland heat. In its heyday, many famous people visited and stayed in the cottage. Among them were the famous scientists Odoardo Beccari and Alfred Russell Wallace. Wallace spent four months in 1854 and 1855 studying the flora and fauna there. His work in Sarawak contributed to the theory of evolution made famous by Darwin. These visitors would come by boat along the Sarawak River. They would disembark at Siniawan and continue the journey by foot to Bung Muan. James Brooke died in 1868 and Charles Brooke took over as the second Raja. Charles started a tea plantation in the Matang Hills and built a cottage there. As Charles preferred the cottage in Matang, James Brooke's cottage was neglected and before long, it faded into a distant memory. Under harsh weather conditions, only the billion posts remained. And there it remained forgotten until the last few years when proactive measures were taken to rebuild it. Fast forward to 2021, it is now a heritage center. There is now a registration come information center and admission fees is 5 ringgit per head. The evergreen adventurers raring to start off the hike. The first stage was an easy stroll over flat land, but not for long. Within minutes, large boulders started to appear. The trail was very rocky, making it difficult to walk. As the trail got steeper, the hike progressively became tougher. The good news was, there were ropes to help in the climbing. However, the bad news was, despite having ropes, the climb was still very challenging as the rocks could be slippery and the gradient were mostly very steep. Soon, we reached the first viewpoint at Batu Tikopok. Batu Tikopok means split stone in the Bidayu language. See the narrow gap between these two boulders that looked like it was split. We had to go through the narrow passage to continue our journey. And just up ahead was the first viewpoint. The mysterious Mount Santubong in the distance. The journey continues, including crawling under clumps of bamboo. Next stop, the old site of the Bidayu villages. Back in the old days, there were three villages with about 700 inhabitants. Each of the villages had their own chief and even had their own head house. One of the chiefs was then appointed as the overall leader of the three villages. Every morning, 
the villagers would go down to tend to the paddy fields in the lowland and return to their longhouses in the evening. The coming of the white rajas brought peace to Sarawak and eventually the villagers moved to the lowlands as they were no longer in danger of attacks. And like Brooks Cottage, the longhouses faded into memory. Today, huge fruit trees can be seen around the area which could possibly be planted during the time when the longhouses were there. Those days, whenever the Raja was in his cottage, the villagers would bring their offerings of fruits for him, including durians. Not far from the Bidayu longhouses lies the Raja's cottage. As mentioned earlier, after the death of James Brooke, the cottage fell into disrepair and soon forgotten until the 1980s when Lord Cranbrook, a former University Malaya lecturer, took an interest in it. Initially, progress was slow, but with the help of a local journalist, James Ritchie, who highlighted the history of the place through newspaper and the support of the local people, especially from Kampung Peninjau Lama, things slowly fell into place. One thing led to another, and overcoming the challenges, the Brook Heritage Site and Brook's Cottage was finally completed with the help from several parties. During James Brook's time, there was supposed to be a viewpoint in front of the cottage, but today, the jungle has regained control of its rightful place. A short distance from the cottage lies a very intriguing rock. During the Raja's time, there was supposed to be a spring gushing out from under the rock where the Raja and his visitors would bathe there. Today, this place is named Raja Kif. The trail after the Raja Cave was the most challenging part of the whole hike. It was very steep and can be muddy and slippery at times. Fortunately, ropes were there to make the climb easier. Upon passing all the steep slopes, the second viewpoint appeared in front of us. More climbing brought us to the third viewpoint where we met two other hikers. Zizi and Naim were regular hikers to this trail. They were the only hikers besides us here during the hike. Friendly and jovial, they told us it was just another 20 minutes more to the peak and no more steep climbing like the earlier part of the hike. It was interesting to note that Although the signage pointed the way to the peak, the path was going downhill. And there was a ladder placed at an almost perpendicular position. Then, across a flimsy bridge, plus more stretches of narrow path. Finally, a clearing with thick undergrowth appeared ahead. Going through this clearing brought us to our destination. The last few steps. Unfortunately, the ladder is shaky and was in bad condition. The bamboo handrail was damaged and could no longer be used. Hopefully, the authorities can get it repaired as soon as possible. Finally, the summit is a huge rock with a flat slanting surface. Sad to say, it was covered with lots of graffiti.
Even the signage was filled with graffiti. However, the view was fantastic. We were fortunate as the weather was very kind to us, giving us a clear view. A panoramic view of Kuching City from the peak of Bung Muan. Even the airport could be seen. The return journey used the same trail. It would be wonderful if the authorities can clear an alternative route so that the whole trail goes in a loop instead of using the same track on return journey. There were a lot of butterflies and insects flying around but it was difficult to capture them on camera except for this one who decided to stay stationary long enough to be snapped and this little fella decided to roll into a ball For me, the icing to the cake for this trip was having an opportunity to see the amorphous heavity of corpse flower in different stages of growth Although none was blooming along the trail, I managed to see a young plant, a flower stalk with seeds, and a wilted flower. A rare plant, I was very happy to see quite a few in this area. Just missed the boat. This one was blooming just a few days ago. Thank you for watching.